What my presentation is about is what do you see? Well, we're all educated people, right? I mean, how do we, how do we, what do, how do we see things? Well, people are amazing critters. Our producers, we are, and we can, we can very efficiently um, take nice, stable resources like that right there, just using money, time, and talent machinery. And we can kill everything that naturally wants to live there, okay? And then we can use big equipment, because we love big equipment, right? And we can shape the ground, and we can, and we can stop all the erosion that resulted in the unstable soils that, when we killed everything, right? And then we can plant stuff that would naturally die don't you love that, that planner? <laughs> and we can provide it with everything it needs. Because it would die at otherwise. And then we also will kill everything that wants to come back in that spot, right? And then we can swath and bale it and we can stack it in nice barns like this. Back to that big equipment so that way we can load it back up, right? And we can haul it over to the feed mill mix it all up together, and then we can haul it down to these well-built bunks, okay, and feed it to, you know, animals that would have survived out there in the first place. We always want to fix stuff. Maybe what we need to be looking at is what's going on there in the first place. Maybe we ought to be looking at, let's, let's see how Mother Nature does things. And let's let's work with her rather than against her. Let's let's see if we can use the natural processes to get what we need done. Because what we need is to feed the world. I mean that's what our jobs are, right? I mean our jobs are to protect the resources and to assist our producers, but ultimately that's what it's about. It's about feeding the world. That's a great deal. I take it very serious. I'm sure all of you do. You know, if you want to make small changes, change how you do things. If you want to make big changes, change how you see things. The objectives of, uh, of this, uh, we're going to define and discuss ecological processes. I mean, that's important. But like I said, we're all educated. We all know the ecological processes. I'm going to, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through those, but I'll, I want to encourage you to think about changing from the engineering and mechanical to more of the ecological, using Mother Nature, using what, how the functions, the natural functions of the soil. So it's pretty amazing. So why are we all concerned about this soil health? It's amazing. Um, how many, the, the, the common thing, we've, we've been fortunate enough to be able to go all over the place from North Dakota to uh, Dallas to um, Norman, Oklahoma, talking with different people, meeting, meeting all the big movers and shakers like uh, uh, David Brandt, you know, I mean, uh, and uh, Gabe Brown, and th these guys have amazing talent. It's the way they think. They, they're never afraid to, to learn more. They always want to learn more. So why are we all concerned about the soil health? A lot of people say, it can't happen here. We can't do that here. I've had more people tell me that than you can imagine. Now, none of these guys that are doing it, but the guys who, the way they perceive life, the way they see life, we can't do it here. What an amazing attitude. We're concerned. I mean, we already take care of this stuff, right? I mean, our producers, we do. We maintain the fertility and control erosion, right? What about uh, changing costs of inputs? Everything keeps going up. All the cost of what we, to, to produce ag commodities, everything keeps going up. Used to, when you wanted to increase 
a, a rancher or a farmer wanted to increase what they were making, their bottom line, they just got bigger. They they grew bigger calves. They they produced more. Well, that you know that's not automatic anymore. And even if you do produce more, that doesn't mean that you're going to make more money because the, the, the cost of inputs to make it, to, to get more, uh, offset the cost. You're, you're probably losing money. You can be losing money. Change in the risk environment. World economy. Have you ever heard of uh, Roundup Ready Kosher? <laughs> huh? No. Oh yeah, we're, that's a that's a, a it's what happened in, over on the eastern plains. I mean, they've been using sprays, and the, and now the, the weeds are they're adapting to it. All right, fine, we can take care of it. Because see, and that's part of the process. That's part of the mother nature deal. She, she adjusts. She's very powerful. Yeah, round up the kosher. Yeah. <laughs> Ignoring the facts don't change the facts. Do we have an issue? Do we have issues? One of, one of my guys, they, uh, he was uh, talking with uh, his, the producers coming in, and he, talking about soil health and promoting it because we was all on fire, you know, and, and, and to the point where he's being a little bit too pushy. You know, I mean, people need to be in the right place before they're willing to and able to take the message. All right. And I said, you know, I said, you know, you got, you got to relax a little bit here. You know, you got to back up, keep telling, telling the good, good news, but don't be so pushy. We have issues, and until the producers recognize they have issues, you're not going to change them. If they think they're doing as good as it can be done, you're not going to change them. If I think I'm as smart as I'm ever going to be. I'm not ever going to get any smarter. That, I mean, that's the same deal. I mean, it doesn't matter. But ignoring the facts don't change the facts. Soil health. The sustained capacity to full, uh, soil to function at a high level as a vital living ecosystem. You know, nature does that. Nature does not, uh, uh, a living ecosystem talks about more than one thing there, more, more than monoculture. And so much, much of the time in, in modern ag, we want monocultures. You know, that's the, that's what we focus on because we want to kill everything we don't want there. So we just, we just want this crop. Conservation farming puts first things first by attending to the needs of the soil, by seeing to it that that's the starting off place, the base is put into sound health and kept that way. Any other approach, no matter what it may be, has always and uh, always must lead to eventually to agriculture disaster. Who said that? The needs of the soil. Who said that? The needs of the soil. This quote. Recognize it? The father of our agency. In 1943, the needs of the soil. That's what today's about, is the needs of the soil, for sure. Now, either he was way before his time, or we're playing a lot of catch-up. Because that right there is what we're, that's what, that's what we're talking about. That's what Swarm's going to talk to you about. That's what VJ's going to talk to you about. That's what this whole movement across, and it's like something new. What's well, something new? He was talking about it all the way back then. 1943, isn't that amazing? And this is why it's so tough, you know? Most people have to run into the wall. We, we have to get burned before, oh, whoa. You know what I mean, when you was a kid, don't touch that stove, right? Why? Oh, gosh, <laughs> no wonder. Most of us have to get burned before we can we learn things. That's just the way we are. Mental exercise. If um, yesterday, I didn't check today, uh, a barrel of oil was uh, $98, I think. And we got, what, $4 diesel? Well, I don't know what foreign diesel is over here. Three, three eighty, dollars something like that. <clears throat> but if it goes to two fifty, dollars what would the price of diesel be? What, what if government uh, price supports and insurance were eliminated tomorrow? 
Could, could we help our producers still stay in business? I mean, that's what our jobs are. Our jobs are to help them write their plans, right? Put their plans, their, their ideas, their, their objectives on paper. That's, that's what our jobs are. And to protect the resource, okay? Could we develop that strategy to do both? Maintain the, the resources and the profitability. That's pretty tough. Well, to do it, wouldn't it make more uh, um, perfect sense to use natural productivity? Use what Mother Nature? You know, what's uh, uh, nitrogen? I mean, you, you put on, uh, what is it, like 80 cents, 60 cents, pound, whatever? It used to be 5 cents, you know? Everybody fertilized, right? You can't afford to. Well, if we were to use, and Storm will talk about how the difference in man making fertilizer and plants making fertilizer. But making, uh, talking about, the, or using the natural productivity, that's very important. Well, if we can do that, wouldn't that make a lot of sense to do that today? The more we could do that today, the better our producers would be the better our environment would be, the better we could do our jobs. Why not go ahead and do that? I like Albert, and I've got several of his... Uh, he was a smart guy, I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> He's a pretty smart guy. I, I, I like his little tidbits of wisdom. Uh, small is the number of people who see things with their eyes and think with their minds. Hmm. Most people, it's, uh, I have to believe it before I can see it, right? Rather than see it to believe it. Ecological processes. The water cycle. Oh, you know what? I didn't do. Uh, you'll not see this at very many uh, presentations, especially, you know, government geeks and stuff like that. But if you want to you take some, one of those and pass it around, one per customer. One per customer. You know, and take one of those, pass it around. And what these are, if, if you know, if, if, if you get sleepy or, you know, if I'm boring you or if something I say you just disagree with, throw it at me, you know? You're not going to get that opportunity very many times, okay? And I'm a pretty big target. I doubt if you can miss, okay? So, and, you know, if, if, if I, and I'm being serious, if you don't agree with something, throw it. So wait a minute, that's just, you, you know, you don't get that opportunity. <laughs> you don't get that opportunity at home, do you? <laughs> that's all different. Yeah. So, ecological uh, processes. All right, water cycle, nutrient cycle, energy flow, succession, plant com uh, co uh, competition, and uh, collaborative. We used to not have this collaborative relationship here, but I tell you what, the, the, the more we've been going around and seeing stuff, and as far as I know, no one can explain it. But I'm seeing stuff that, and part of it, I think, because all of this I have to, I'm telling myself, okay? What I'm, what I'm hoping to be able to do is, is encourage you to, to be able to look at things a little different. Okay, that's all it is. And every time I'm saying this, I'm telling myself. I mean, I believe in this. And when, I'm, when I go out in the field, I look at things. I look at things different than I used to look at. So why is that growing there? Well, why is that growing better there with something like, a, uh, like in uh, uh, oats ground? And I got a drill wheat through it. And that wheat is twice as big as on either side of it. That, why, what's going on there? I can't prove anything, but I know what I see. And that wheat is doing better when it's growing a cool season grass and it's growing in a warm season grass that's normal. It's kind of nice. One of these will be the most limiting factor for soil health. Water cycle. It's kind of a busy slide, but um, this just represents how we get water and what we do with it as agriculture. Um, so we, you guys receive most of your 
precipitation is what snow? Is that right or, or rain? What, no. Like nine inches of snow on average? Well, nine inches of precipitation. Yeah, we could only get eight, eight inches, eight, eight to nine inches every year. Of precip in the in form of snow. Not all of them. All of the oh, all mixed. Oh, all okay. All right. Well, it's either it's either going down the river, the, the the stuff that goes down the river or into the aquifers. That's the blue water. Okay. That's the blue water. The the white water is what falls on bare ground and is evaporated that back up. Okay. The green water is where agriculture people make money. Now, so I know. The blue water is very uh, valuable when people are selling ditch. I don't know if you guys have ditch water and all that kind of stuff. So, but as agriculture people, the green flow is through plants. And I don't care if you're a rancher or a farmer or an orchard. You know, it's the the water that goes back up through your plants. That's where we make our money. That's where our producers make their money. So what we want to do is we want to capture as much of what falls through green water. That's where people are going to be more uh, uh, successful, right? Took this, um, this is in southeast Colorado, rain site. Looks pretty tough, huh? Looks like that would cover yeah. <laughs> see this right here? I don't know how well you can see it. That uh, that's a that bare soil. You know, and it's like powder. It's like flour. And if you've ever poured water on flour, um, it just puddles. It doesn't go in. It just puddles, and it evaporates out fast. In 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 eastern Colorado, southeastern Colorado, it doesn't take long. You got you got the sun and you got wind. And it and it leaves. I was listening to uh, uh, Alan Savory's the other day on uh, from TED uh, opinions that matter or no um, ad, what ideas that matter or whatever that he just did. Yeah, great. Did you see that? Have you listened? It's an awesome. He does an awesome thing, and he uh, talk and he talks about over in Africa or wherever. He shows his place looked a lot like that. Okay, they got a two inch rain. Or three inch rain, whatever. And the next day he goes out there, he goes out on it, and it's dry. It's not muddy. It's gone because there's nothing to capture. This right here was taken about five miles away from this in southeast Colorado. Same, same range site. Now, this is capturing water here. It's using it, coming up through through the green plants. Same range size. What's the difference? Management. Water. Water cycling here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was Real really, fast. <laughs> really fast. That's exactly right. How you can remember that's the blue water. That water blew right on by there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That blue water was brown and blowing by. Yeah. This guy, he had, he had a beautiful Milo crop, or the stubble from it, knee, knee high. Three days before this, he said, you know, I've got to go out there and I've got to, I've got to prepare the seed bed. I've got to, I've got to get ready for, uh, to plant my next crop. Because I can't plant through, you know, all that big old stubble. I've got, got to undercut it. I've got to loosen it up. i got to create that. But this right here in the bottom of that is about that deep. And that, this right here is a semi on the highway about a, a mile away. This ground is not very steep. That's pretty flat. All that soil right over on the neighbors, right on the CRP, and all of that stuff. There's a big old dam sitting there. Amazing. But he had the mindset that he had to prepare for his crop that way, that mechanical that mechanical approach. We have a lot of work to get done. Water cycling is not happening here. This wheat stubble back here, that's the spray marks. 
in spring break. Now that in the, in, in the background there, I mean that's that's capture water, right? Here in the front, not so much. Your white water is it's leaving. This is uh, the kind of the average budget for back of county or for eastern plains, not just back of county, eastern plains. You know, we have about 14 inches. What you, what's your average here? Eight, nine. Eight, nine, really. So 14, that's almost paradise, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is, you know, when, you, when, we, when we're losing this amount, what is it? Oh, it just, it, ours just uh, depends depending on where you are. Oh, I mean, right. we're, we're at, we're up. Well, no, up in Glenwood, Glenwood. eight or nine in Rifle, and mm -hmm. get up to Aspen, more, more then you get, get, snow you get. Carbondale, you're 14, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. and the store has got a, a, a chart that, I mean, this is where, that's where we come up with this, as far as the amount of blue water. You guys probably have more blue water, right? Or in places, anyway. I know that when we were up at the <coughs> steamboat, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the gullies are pretty significant. I mean, that's, I mean you, you, you lose it through blue water or you, you lose it through the wind, I mean, in the white water. But, you know, the thing is, here's what our normal precipitation is. Here's what it, here's what it takes, this is basically for wheat to grow a wheat crop. Well, we're not even using half of it. Certainly take more than six inches to grow a wheat crop. Nope. I didn't come up with that. That's what, that, yeah, it's, six it's, six point two, whatever. You know, it's exactly. Don't the throw that. That what my number? Okay, That's what the purpose of it. That's BS. All right, we're moving right along here. <laughs> I'm still not quite sure I believe. <laughs> it's exactly the white water, blue water, green water. There, there it's only what's going through the plant that grows the wheat crop. Yeah, different with the plant. Well, and that's exactly right. Nutrient, nutrient cycle. The natural flow of chemical elements and compounds from the physical environment through various trophic levels in the biological community and back again. What you got to take that all in. Basically what you're talking about there is if you got eating, pooping, and peeing. If you're not getting eight, you're, you're, if you're not eating, you're getting eight. I mean, that, that's that's what that is. That's that's the cycle. Fifty percent of the nutrients are lost. Fifty percent of the fertilizer. I mean, that, to replace what's lost. Isn't that amazing? We, you know, a while ago we was talking about the amount of uh, uh, if if prices go on up. That is not sustainable. That's amazing right there. Ralph Rolf Dersch, he's a consultant down in uh, South America down in Paraguay. Nutrient cycling, water cycling. What are we doing here? Nutrient cycling, water cycling there? No. No. What about here? This, and it is hard to see. You know what? What this picture is is cow pie. And it's covered with dung beetles. And they're slurping up all the, the, the cow pie. And they're, and, and they're taking it over and they're burying it. All right? This cow pie was gone in two days from when it hit the ground. I mean, it was gone. That's nu nutrient cycle. If that cow pie would have landed right here, it would have oxidized and it would still be there. There's the difference. If we can get it functioning, then we've got something happening. Because that right there doesn't stay there. It gets into the ground. It gets things moving. Water cycling, <coughs> nutrient cycling. That, I mean, it's happening here. Now, yeah, you've got some bare ground. But it's, it's, it's better. That's what we need to avoid, that desertification right there. I am 1935, Stratford, Texas. This is just south of where I live. Okay? 1935. I am glad we don't ever. I'm glad I didn't live back then. And I'm glad we don't have to see that today. Right? Holy crap. 
That was 2001. And I could have put another one up there for 2012. And, they, and, and the 2012 one they had is like a 27 or 47 car pileup. People going to the hospital. People hurt. Nutrient cycling? No. Water cycling? No. We got to we got to get the system fixed. How's this for nutrient cycling? Water cycling? Water cycling is pretty good, huh? We, I used to think this was a sexy picture. Man, this is a good picture, huh? Well, we got all that residue there. I take what I do very serious. I mean, come on. Got the green corn growing. And you know what? There's two years worth of residue here. There's the year before and last year's both. There's not nutrient cycling there. Remember that cow pie? Well, I go two days. It's gone. I had a guy come in one day to the office. And I mean, we had had a blow the day before. I mean, it was it was like those pictures before. I mean, it was bad. And he goes, "Oh crap! I just lost five years of residue. It all blew off my field." Man, you know, that was bad. I didn't think about that. I mean, in the last two years, I thought of you know what was going on. He didn't have nutrient cycling happening. The bugs would be putting that back in the ground. That would be chewed up and put back into the, into the soil. You have warm season grass after warm season grass after warm season grass. Basically is what you've got there. Mother Nature doesn't like monocultures. Now what about this? You still got, well, two years ago, corn. But you also got a, you've got a cool season grass. Mother of nature likes diversity, right? You got cool season grass, or you got a warm season grass, cool season grass, warm season grass. Do you have nutrient cycling happening? Yeah, you know, it's better. Do you have water cycling? Yeah, I mean, that's taking in water. That ground's covered. Oh. Now, nah, this is, all right, everybody needs to bear with me. Or you don't have to be close on that. Right. I need to get one of those things. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. All right. Where am I? Got to go to the view. All right, Storm, you got to help me. Oh. This is a clip by uh, Ray Archuleta and John Stickett. Can you see that on it? Have you seen it? Is your soil naked or is it covered? A healthy soil is covered all year round. Soil ecologists call this the detritus. This is the soil's armor. Protects it from the elements and provides habitat for soil organisms. Northopod. Fungus. Sapothetic fungus. Spider. Spider. These organisms so, are a great indicator of a healthy, functioning soil. If you want to keep your soil healthy, discover the cover. There's a ton of those out there. I don't know, Mike hasn't started flooding you guys with it yet, but you know, he, he promised me that he was getting ready to flood you guys with it. Because there's a ton of stuff like that out there. We need to be watching it. Oh, so he is already. <laughs> you know, I noticed you, you've, got, uh, you've got the strategy there. there. Have you read it? What? The strategy? Uh, I've only read part of it. Oh. I haven't. Well, but you've got it, so I'm not. I'm, I'm going to read it, but, I, awesome. but I've been working Earth theme and, and planning for about 
the last month and a half. I'm just eight. impressed that you have it. I was going to about fell over when I saw it. That's why it's in my book. There you go. There you go. Nutrient cycling. They're cycling this pretty good, huh? This guy, this over in Kansas. This guy actually, he uh, he planted a wheat crop back into this once he moved cows all the way across it. He sprayed another field just down the road. He had sprayed it twice. This he got returned from the calves and all the nutrient cycling, all those cow pipes that he, they were dropping and adding back into the ground. The, the, the field that he sprayed, that spray cost him money. He made money on this one. And this one outproduced, it is like 20 bushel wheat better than over where he sprayed it. Why? Because this stuff was working. Look at all the different variety here. He didn't kill everything. He used it and put it right back in. There's some statistics. You guys pasture cropping and stuff. When you take a thousand pounds of milk from your pasture, that's six pounds of nitrogen, two pounds of phosphorus, potassium, two pounds of calcium. That all has to get returned somehow, right? What about when you ship a thousand pound, pounds of beef? What? Go back. I'm ready. Oh, I'm sorry. Duck, duck and cup. Yeah. Almost me. Okay. All right. And here's if you here's if you ship beef pounds of meat. All right. So like two calves. That's what you're losing. What about if you swap and bake? If you swap and nail it, you're losing a lot more than this. Because there it's all gone. This shit's cycling back in. And you're still losing this amount. Which is not that big a deal if you've got diversity out there. Diversity can take care of that. That nutrient cycling. Energy flow. Everybody, you've seen this picture, right? What's missing with this picture? pretty accurate, I mean, as far as this is like the nutrient cycling, that's the different trophic levels, right? Using, you know, the, they harvest the sun, right? The below ground. There's more stuff below the ground happening than above the ground. In a handful of healthy soil, there are more organisms than people that have ever been on the face of the earth in a handful of healthy soil. That herd a while ago, that picture of that herd that, that was grazing, that's the herd below ground. That's the important herd. That's the thing we need to be uh, taken care of. In a handful of soil, 50 billion. Two billion. This <coughs> actinomyces, right? You know what that is? Have you ever gone out after somebody's plowed a field? And that smell? Man, it smells really good. Really? I mean, I, I like how that earth smells, right? You know what that is? It's these fellers dying. That's what that smell is. Of what oxygen? Yes, being exposed, and they're dying, and that's that smell. Hundred million fungus, fifty million protozoa, ten thousand nematodes, thousand orthopods, two zero to two earthworms. If you add all of these up, if you weigh them on a in a in an acre, okay. <coughs> That herd below ground, what do you think it might weigh? In an acre. Up to 2,000 pounds. Now you think about it, then. Per acre, that herd, all ago, that's pretty impressive. That's below ground. 2,000 pounds? We need to take care of them. Is it happening here? 
How's that herd below ground probably here? It may not be as bad as it looks because it is in the winter time, but you don't have uh, you don't have nutrient cycling going on here. You don't have water cycling. You have a lot of white water leaving, right? Energy flow. I mean, that's that's just that's not good. What about here? Water cycling. Yeah, you're capturing nutrient cycling. Probably not. Probably the monoculture. This bindweed patch right out here. Probably, probably got some there. But. Energy flow in that bindweed patch. You got a green plant capturing that 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 sun. What about there? What about there? That's pretty cool. We got the cool season grass. You got the warm season grass. You got the broad leaves. You got everything. That's Mother Nature right there. That's function. You've got your, your water cycles happening there. Your nutrient cycling's happening there. Your energy flows happening there. You're harvesting right there. That's that's what we that's what we need to mimic. See how how crumbly this ground is? Is that <coughs> earthworm in there? That's healthy. That's what we need to get. The natural succession of plants and soil. High, dis high uh, disturbance. That's what, this is what generally man does, right? We get it back down to uh, uh, monocultures. Nature always likes low disturbance. You got the bacterial in the high disturbance and fungal in the uh, low disturbance. Anytime that you move from the the um, uh, complicated, the, the complex to the simplistic, you lose biological function. You lose that natural flow, that natural ability to process things. The natural flow of Mother Nature is to push it up there. And what's man do? Man always wants to push it the other way. If we can find some place in the balance, that's what that's what our jobs are, right? That's what we need to take very serious. So, are you saying you're going to plant trees in your crop fields now? We, I, I saw a bunch of trees in uh, crop fields when I was coming through here, right? In these orchards. Oh. 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 <laughs> uh oh, what's happening here? Should we go ahead and do it now? Mimic Mother Nature. That's what we're talking about. I mean, you've got everything here, right? That's functional. This warm season, cool season grass. Right? Most of my farmers, they see this, that ain't a good deal. We gotta do something about it. We got it. We can't have that, right? But that's what it looks like above. This was with six inches of uh, precip. All right? That's looking pretty good. <coughs> that's underneath. I got a couple more slides that we just found, pictures of this that I need to put in here, but I mean, it's just, a, it's amazing. I mean, that's with six inches. All right, now that, it, we're not harvest yet. But look out here. Look on the outside where it's not covered. Look at how much that canopy, that canopy, both upper and lower, work on, work with each other. And look out here where it doesn't, it's baked. It's dead. It's nothing happening. That's pretty cool right there. It's missing the broad leaves but it's still functioning. This is up in North Dakota. That other was in back again. This is North Dakota. Planted stones throw apart. Planted on the same day, less than three inches of rain. This is a monoculture. All right? You have turnips in here. Four times as much. Why? Collaborative. Symbiotic relationship.
Got weeds? In this right here, I'm sure there's things in here that we don't necessarily, what we used to not want. It's kind of like there, but that's functional, okay? That's functional. You got weeds the whole way, we'd have to kill them, spray them. We'd get rid of them. Now maybe we can manage for what we want rather than managing against what we don't want. Manage for what we want rather than killing everything else. You got compaction? The old way, let's get a big equipment out there. We like big equipment, right? You got to get the ground ready to take in rain. I can't tell you how many times I've had producers tell me that. You got to get the, you got to get ready for it. You got to take in the rain. We show them the slate test. And, oh, it's been a over, right? um, We don't have that to set up today. We will. Uh, if you've ever seen that, that, that the, the rainfall uh, simulator. The amazing stuff. You just working the ground doesn't cause the, the water to go in. That's not what causes the water to go in. We were up in the um, Dakota Lakes uh, with Dwayne Beck, and he was pumping water out of the Missouri River there in, onto his uh, corn. Okay, yeah, and he, the ground is just has residue all over big old corn plants. And he said, "Let's walk out here in this corn crop." And this sprinkler uh, side road just went by us, pumping like a thousand gallons a minute. I said, no, Dwayne, I didn't bring my hip waders. He goes, ah, go on. So we walked out there. You know, my, my, my feet didn't even get wet. Or they got wet, but they didn't get muddy. I didn't sink down. I, I thought, literally, I would be bogged. No. That water went in the ground. I mean, and we walked in right behind it. Just amazing. Why? Because it's functioning. Because the ground is functioning. Using the natural, the natural uh, processes. Got erosion? Well, let's get that big equipment out because we like that. Uh, engineers, we got engineers in here. Uh, I'm not picking on you. Don't be throwing that down. Still like big equipment. Yeah, I, uh, me too. You know, I love big equipment, but but and we, and that's what we used to think. We had to control that stuff. We got to build a terrace. We got to build a waterway, right? Jay Fuhrer says he he used to be the waterway king. You know. That's what he he did, and then he got. And then once he got things functioning, and producers on board. I mean, they were they were pushing him, getting getting their their land functioning right. And all of a sudden, you know, he didn't have to have uh, waterways. Didn't need terraces. Didn't need that stuff. They got a phone call. Said, hey, you know, uh, we need PRS. We need things done. We need this stuff reported, right? Because that's well, we don't need that. We got a ground working. Work your, work your, work your mind, not your soul, right? New way, keep it covered, increase the organic. Matter. What about profit margins? You used to think, you know, we got to get bigger, bigger, better, faster, right? How about do more with what we have? Let's let's use Mother Nature. Let's increase through the natural selection. Points to ponder. Thomas says, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his or her patients in the care of the human frame and a proper diet and the cause and prevention of disease. Rather than putting band-aids on. Right? Rather than treating the symptoms. That's what he's talking about here. Would have been nice. Wouldn't it be nice if that's what we did today with our health care? That's not what our health care does. Our health care treats the symptoms. And that's pretty much what we do. We treat the symptoms. That's what we have done. That's what our, I mean, that's the way we've been programmed. Let's, let's quit treating the symptoms and let's get the body functioning right. What do you see? 20 cents. 20 cents. What? Two dimes. Two dimes. Change. Change? That's a good one. I like that. That's the first time I've ever heard that one. That's good. I'm gonna... Two presidents. <laughs> oh, what? Paradigm shift. Paradigm. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Good job. So, 
the philo philosophical or theoretical framework of any kind, the frame of reference that you have in evaluating information. Blah, 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 right? How you see things. That's what that means. How you see things, your paradigm. How you process information. So what do you see? A bad picture. <laughs> What do you see? Bird having lunch. A bird having lunch. Yeah? Yeah? Upside down. What if... Hey, hey. Give me... Where, where's the flag? I want to try... <laughs> what if we was to turn your world upside down? Same picture. Same picture. But it looks different now. You see it? Before it was a, a, a bird having lunch. Now that's a guy catching a fish on an island. Same picture. It's all how you see things. How do we see things? We're very sure about everything, right? Well, maybe we don't need to be so sure. Maybe we need to question things. It's not hard to get the right answers. It's hard to ask the right question, right? Same picture. Dwayne Beck up there, Dakota Lakes. Our producers, we produce food and we manage ecosystems. That's, that's a big difference from, oh, he's just a farmer. Just a rancher. No, it's important. We manage ecosystems. No problem can be solved from the same consciousness that created it. Somebody's got a sign as you walk in the office right over here. I like it. It says, change your mind. Change your mind, you'll uh, solve your problem. Awesome. Man. I started saying, man, I don't even need to I'll pack up before I even get started because they already got it here. Huh? <laughs> Who? <laughs> there you go. Who the exclusive club? <laughs> yeah. All right. What were the ecological drivers? Water cycle. More plants. Less disturbance. And this disturbance is not just with iron. Okay. It's not just with big equipment. On that first slide of that range, that disturbance was with hooves. All right? And you can have just as bad, if not worse, disturbance there. Nutrients like more organisms increase the biology for a longer time of the year. Energy flow. More green plants. That's how our agriculture people make money. Running water through plants. Producing. Succession. Diverse species that mimic nature. Now this kind of maybe sounds a little corny, but do you have the courage? Because it takes a lot of courage. To, to take your long-held beliefs and say, this is the way I've always seen things. This is how we've always done things. To question that. To, to, to look in, into yourself and say, can, do, can I do something different? Can I do something better? And getting your producers there. Not all of them are ready for that. And until they're ready for that, so much of the time it takes, like before, i got to feel the heat. i got to run into the wall. i got to have the banker knock on my door and say, you know what? Somebody else is going to be living here next year. You're not going to be living here because your, your notes are going to get called. Until they're willing to change, that's when, that's when we can reach them. But we've got to be ready. We've got to be ready to change with them. We've got to look at the way we've done things always. Are we doing it right? Are we treating the symptom? Or are we read, ready and willing to actually look at the problem? Do you have the courage to question your long held beliefs? The only thing that gets in the way of me learning is my education. That's how true is that most of the time. 
So much of the time, well, you know, that's not what I was taught. That's not, that can't be right. I don't care what I see. Albert said that. He, did I mention he, he's a pretty smart guy? Yeah. That's what I've got. Thanks. Can we, can we change? That's, that's what we're, that's what we're looking at. Any questions? Very good. Well, one, one. Nope. We, oh, got yeah. one. we got one here. Okay. You said right. six inches on the weed. Right. <laughs> what? What? You said six inches on the weed. Yep. But did that? That's the water you said that enters the plant through its roots and transpired through photosynthesis back into the air, right through. Yep. The, Oxygen, yep. right? It was only the transpiration element. Right. That's what the six inches. Right. Is. That's the point right. of that, right? That's the point. So are you I mean, saying because it's a cool season grass, and it starts in the in the fall, and it and it's very efficient, the way the way it grows and the way it produces. Right. And that's where it. I mean, that's where it fits the eastern plains. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I think I believe I, I believe it, especially if you separate evaporation and transpiration right. from. Right. And you and you have to do that. That's where that came. It's from. not a consumptive use number. Thank you.